everyone, this is Mom Rueda. So for today's lecture, we will discuss about the history of life on Earth. Basically, in this topic, we will going to answer questions such as where did life came from, how life started on Earth, and when did it started. Actually, there are all sorts of ways to reconstruct the origin of life on Earth, and most of the time, pinning down when specific events occurred is often tricky. So, how do we go back from the past, and what's the best method that we can use? No? Of course, uh, unlike today, where you can post nostalgia-inducing pictures no, from a different era of your life, accompanied with, um, say for example, no, hashtag throwback Thursday, or hashtag TBT, or hashtag flashback Friday, no? before, we don't have cameras, no? so it's impossible to do that thing. Okay? No? Especially during, say for example, Jurassic period or even way back in Hadean era. No? So anyway, all these specific events that were mentioned, say for example, Jurassic, no? period, era, th these timelines in the geologic time scale will be discussed in the next topic. So again, how do we get information about how animals and plants look like or live in the past? Okay. Of course, no, scientists use fossil records. So fossils provide a record of life forms that once existed in the past. No? So say for example, when organisms die, they may leave behind a record in the form of their skeleton or shell or stem. These fossil remains can survive for millions and sometimes billions of years. Paleontologists or the people who study um, fossil records, no, they extract fossil remains from the rock and use them to piece together the history of life. Organisms are only preserved in special conditions, so only a tiny proportion of all living things ever become fossils. So that's the problem no, about fossil record because it is incomplete and many questions remain unanswered about the history of life. Um, still unanswered, no? Nevertheless, in general terms, no, the fossil record gives a surprising clear insight into the historical sequence of events that gave rise to the life we see around us today. No? So, what is a fossil? A fossil is the preserved remains of a once living organism. So, it could be traces of animals, plants, and other organisms from the past. No? Another, no, take note that fossils occur in a particular order. No? The relative age of such fossils is determined by their order in the stacks of layered rocks that make up the stratigraphic record. So, meaning, the older rocks are on the bottom and the younger rocks are on the top. No? And also, no, what do fossils tell us? Actually, fossils tell us a lot of things, and generally, uh, fossils are important evidence for evolution because they show that life on Earth was once different from the life found on Earth today. No, okay. So here, um, this is how a fossil form. No, um, it has different uh, steps. No. Most are formed when a plant or animal dies in a watery environment and is buried in a mud and silt. No? Then, of course, soft tissues quickly decompose, leaving the hard bones or shell behind. Over time, no, sediments builds over the top, creating more layers and hardens into rock. And the movement of tectonic plates no, lifts up the sediments and pushes the fossil closer to the surface. And then it is when the processes of erosion occur that these secrets in stones are revealed to us. No? So eventually, you know, with, the, with erosion, people digging for fossils will expose the preserved remains. So simply as those steps. Okay, no? Here, we also have different ways fossils can form. No? So first is through mineralization. So in mineralization, no, it is the most common type of fossil preservation. And examples include teeth, bones, shells, and wood. No? And this occurs when dissolved minerals 
carried by groundwater fill the cellular spaces of the plants and animals. No? The dissolved minerals crystallize and produce rocks in the shape of the animal or plant. Example, no? in this figure, the wood has been petrified. No? Petrification is the result of a tree or tree-like plants having been replaced by stone via the process of mineralization. Okay, next, another way is through trace fossils, okay? or indirect evidence of organisms. So here, um, these trace fossils, uh, it record the activity of an organism. They include, uh, for example, trucks and trails, worm ho holes and burrows, nests, fesses, no? uh, calcite, calcite mounds. No? So in this figure, it shows the, uh, the t dinosaur trucks no? um, dated from 65 million years ago. So with these um, tracks and trails, no, it tells us that dinosaurs really exist no? and some other organisms that may exist before um, are really true. Next no? is preserved remains. So these are intact remains of animals, often including preserved skin, muscle, bone, hair, and internal organs. Fossils form when an entire organism becomes encased in materials such as ice or volcanic ash, or sometimes buried in a pit bugs. This is a rare type of preservation than the other forms that were mentioned earlier. No? So examples are mammoths, or in the left side of the figure, no? these mammoths are is frozen in a permafrost or some organisms as well on the right side like this mosquito, mosquito that might be accidentally trapped and preserved whole in a amber or a tar. Okay, now that we have already discussed the methods that scientists use to somehow piece together the origin of life, let's try to travel back in time to the origin of the earth. So let's have some timeline. In this figure, uh, it shows some major events and trends in Earth's surface environment during the first 4 billion years ago, or the Hadean Eon, which represents the time before a reliable record of life was made through fossils. Earth formed about approximately uh, between 4.6 and 4.5 billion years ago, along with the rest of the solar system. So let's try to elaborate more uh, these major events that happened over a billion of years ago. So, approximately 4.6 billion years ago, uh, the solar system was a cloud of dust and gas known as a solar nebula. Because of gravitational compaction, it caused nuclear fusion, forming the sun in the center of the nebula. With the rise of the sun, or as the sun was formed, the remaining material began to clump together and resulting to larger particles, or known as planetesimals, which eventually formed into planets such as Earth, and some became asteroids and comets. And around 4.5 billion years ago, during its early history, Earth was bombarded by massive meteorites and other celestial bodies. Also, temperature is very high with frequent volcanic activity. Given with such inhospitable conditions, uh, it's probably prevented, it probably prevented life from evolving. It was known that at this particular time, the atmosphere was contained of water vapor and many chemicals such as hydrogen, methane, and ammonia released by volcanic eruptions. There were, there were actually lab experiments that were done to simulate the condition of the early Earth atmosphere. And that experiment was known as the Miller-Urey experiment that was conducted in the 1950s. So, uh, in this experiment, they designed an apparatus with a warm flask of water simulated the Earth's early ocean. The strongly redu reducing atmosphere in the system consisted of hydrogen, methane, ammonia, and water vapor. Electrodes delivered an electric current to mimic lightning into the synthetic atmosphere or the chamber. A uh, condenser cooled the atmosphere, thus raining water and any dissolved compounds into the miniature sea. As material circulated through the apparatus, Miller and Urey periodically collected samples for analysis. 
They identified a variety of organic molecules including amino acids such as alanine and glutamic acid and that are common in proteins of organisms. They also found ma many other amino acids and complex oily hydrocarbons. So their experiments, no, along with considerable evidences, lend support to the theory that the first life forms arose spontaneously through naturally occurring chemical reactions. However, uh, there are still many skeptics of this theory who remain unconvinced or doubtful that Miller and Neary did an accurate simulation of conditions on early Earth. In fact, no, um, some scientists support the RNA world hypothesis, no, which suggests that the first life was self-replicating -replic RNA. No? Uh, by the way, no, the RNA hypothesis is actually something nice to look at. So you may want to have a quick research about it if you want. No? So, okay. Moving on, no, or going back to our timeline, uh, around 4.4 billion years, no, the Earth cooled and oceans condensed, but the early atmosphere contained almost no oxygen. No? Hence, or probably no sign of living organism yet. And then around 3.8 billion years, no, uh, Earth still was wracked by meteorites impacts and volcanic eruptions. It was still a tough place to make a living. Then eventually, no, life evolved shortly after the bombardment ended. No, at this um, timeline, no. Then it was believed that after the end of bombard bombardment, it was believed that simple organic molecules may have formed in the ocean. No? So that's why, no, uh, the first living things were probably simple bacteria and they required chemosynthesis of organic compounds. No? Chemosynthesis is also a process by which organisms produce food just like photosynthesis for plants. Only that in photosynthesis is powered by sunlight while chemosynthesis runs on chemical energy. No? Okay, so do you really think that the first life may have really formed in the oceans? Well, now given with the adverse surface conditions, now the most likely place for life to develop might have been at the deep ocean thermal springs, which are protected from meteorite bombardment. Another, uh, the raw material and the heat needed for chemosynthesis would have been available here in the deep ocean vents. No? So probably it might be, uh, this hypothesis is true, no? but another hypothesis uh, suggests that simple microbes for first form in aerosols. No? So aerosols are tiny liquid droplets or solid particles suspended in the atmosphere. However, there are no fossil records about that yet no? until, uh, until the time uh, around 3.5 billion years ago or more. No? So in where the oldest fossils or the first ever fossils were found. Uh, the fossils serve as an undisputed evidence of life on Earth. No? They are known as microbial mat fossils, such as stramatolites, that found in 3.48 billion year old sandstone discovered in Australia. Now, these stramatolites are created by uh, cyanobacteria, and probably photosynthesis, photosynthesis have been already started around this time. No? But it has been called into question. No? Although, also, no, there are also records no, or hints of all this fossil, fossil life found in Greenland rocks around 3.7 billion years ago. So then again, it's really hard to pinpoint the exact time or events that happened in the history of life on Earth. No. So moving on, okay, so next is the buildup of oxygen in the atmosphere. No. It was known that the Great Oxidation event happened as early as 2.4 billion years ago. Remember that the photosynthetic cyanobacteria occurred early as well. No? Of course, this type of organism, such as the cyanobacteria, no, they produce their food through photosynthesis. 
and the byproduct of photosynthesis is oxygen. So, oxygen would have reacted with any iron in the seawater, causing it to rust and form a layer of iron oxide on the seabed. No? The iron oxide deposits along the sea are therefore indirect evidence for the existence of bacteria at that time. No? So recently though, some researchers have challenged this idea. They think that cyanobacteria only evolved later no? and that other bacteria oxidized the iron in the absence of oxygen. So that's why they thought that oxygen builds up in the atmosphere around 1.8 billion years. No? Yet, um, others also think that cyanobacteria began pumping out oxygen as early as 2.1 billion years ago. But that oxygen began to accumulate only due to some other factor. So then again, no, there are really conflicts with the fossil evidence. No? So it's somehow hard to still pinpoint, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, the exact um, events that happened in a particular time. Okay. So, again, no, uh, moving on, let's, uh, the first type of cell that exists in early life was prokaryotes. Uh, example, simple bacteria. No? Uh, this type of organism, no, they, don't ha they don't have true nucleus. No? They store their genetic material in a poorly defined cell, not separated from the cytoplasm since most of their organelles are not membrane bound. So, these are the definite characteristics of a prokaryotic cell. No. Okay, so then came the evolution of multicellular eukaryotes. So, one of the definite characteristics of eukaryotic cells is that um, their compartmentalization. No. So, most of their organelles are membrane-bound, no? unlike the prokaryotes. Okay? So, the evolution of uh, eukaryotic cells, no, are through endosymbiosis. So the theory of endosymbiosis no, proposes that mitochondria and plastids were formerly small prokaryotes living within the larger host cells. So if you can still remember this theory, you know, it involves the engulfment of a bacterium by another feed-giving organism. You know. Therefore, you know, uh, it only means that uh, the first eukaryotes may have been uh, from the communities of prokaryotes. Okay. So, uh, take note no, that with the complex multicellular organisms, uh, they, rep uh, they would reproduce through sexual reproduction, no, leading to increased genetic variability, hence speeding up the evolution. So, evolution usually happens slowly, no, but between 542 and 515 million years ago, animal life look an incredible leap of forward no so in less than 30 million years almost every major group of animals evolved from jellyfish to snails to vertebrates so um, it really speed up the evolution no through the reproduction okay so this sudden diversification of life forms produce most of the major phyla known today forming the diversity of life or the tree of life no so that's it for today. No? In our next topic, we will going to talk about the major events in the geologic time scale. Uh, some of the events uh, may include the appearance of the first invertebrates, the vertebrates, and some weird species that subsequently went extinct, and of course, uh, the evolution of humans. Okay, that's it, and thank you, and have a great day.